So Robert, this might sound a little bit cheesy, but the solution to housing, the housing crisis and the housing problems could come out of a strawberry box. Strawberry box? Well, that sounds very tasty. Yeah, and if you opened up your strawberry box and took out your strawberries this morning on this episode of Real Estate Chat with... Jonder Perez. And Robert E., this is a bit of history going back in time, which I'm going to rely on Robert's knowledge and expertise in because we're going to be talking about strawberry boxes in the sense of wartime houses. Now, wartime housing, from the Toronto Star article, Ottawa's wartime housing is a start, still a long way from declaring victory. So something like this, I'm sure if you've driven around Toronto or you know wherever you live throughout Canada, you've seen, especially in major cities, where there's a lot of density or population before the condos came, you see a lot of this kind of housing. They call them, I guess, strawberry boxes because of the design. You've got a main level kitchen, living area, family-ish area, maybe one bedroom there and then two bedrooms upstairs. These are the typical houses that when I was in school, when I drew a house, I didn't realize that I was drawing a wartime house because I guess that's how they were typically modeled. And we're going to include a copy of this article, a link to it in our description. Uh, but a couple of facts, more than 30,000 homes of this sort were built, built in Canada, a large impact when population was much smaller. So the kind of housing was and still is an inter integral part of the urban fabric. So in the development and growth of the initial, I guess, wave of density and population boom, uh, this was it. And there was a recent announcement by the federal government, Robert, that I'm going to let you talk about. Robert, what's bringing back, I mean, there is no... I guess Canada right now is not involved, at least directly, in a war. But why wartime housing and why is this term getting thrown around recently? At the end of the war, there were a lot of soldiers coming back and they were going to establish families or establish marriages or maybe carry on with someone who had just married before going away. And they were going to have families. We all know about the baby boom. So the baby boom, 19. 47 through 67 or something or other like that. So they wanted a place for these people to now establish their separate families. So they said, how can we do this quickly? So there's a lot of land around. That article tells you a few, there were like there's a Victoria Park in St. Clair. There's a, it's called War Vet is the name of the court. You go out to off Western Road, you can see exactly the same kind of housing, which were, were small bungalows or story and a halves. And I've sold a couple of these where in actual fact, in North York at uh, Young and Finch, there's a street there where the original owner bought from the builder and it was like a one bedroom bungalow on the main floor and the homeowner completed the second story, the story and a half. Or at Victoria Park in St. Clair, they built a bungalow and it wasn't completely finished. The people lived in the basement, the owners lived in the basement and then they finished off the main floor. So why is there so many bungalow basement apartments in Scarborough? Because that's where the people lived initially, and then they built the house upstairs. So the standard plan that was uh, anticipatable by the municipality, you knew that it, you, you, all you needed to do was provide a certain amount of frontage and a certain amount of depth, and then the house could be there. And so what they're saying is we'll come up with some standard plans. It won't be the same as it was naturally, because everybody's worried about frontage and they're going to be on skinnier frontage. So it'd be two stories for small families, for medium-sized families, for large families, and for multiple units so for an apartment building, a standard procedure, sort of like in Russia in the fifties where everything looks the same. Now it won't be quite like that. Some will be green and some will be blue, but the idea now there's no plans yet. And there's no examples of the properties yet, but, it sure sounds good if you were at the cooler talking around saying, well, they're going to speed up. They're going to provide cheaper houses because they won't have to approve every single design of every single builder. They'll just do number seven or they'll just do number four and three and seven. And it just speed up the whole process. Now, if these plans existed and if there was a demand for those plans and if the municipalities were building that kind of a house, and if they had the land supply for that, because most of this has been land bank by developers and they're saying, well, I don't, you just told me I can't do that because I've got to allow for vistas and I got to allow for, for, for road allowances and I got to allow for all kinds of things and school sites that you're not even going to build. They're going to say, where are we going to put those? We don't want those kind of things here. That's not attractive. We want something with a garage. We want something with a family room. So does it meet anybody's demand except for 
a hypothetical solution to a hypothetical problem uh, that should have been addressed 15 years ago. And certainly you don't want to try and come up with some half-baked stupid idea to solve a problem that you've created by inviting way too many people that you, that you have not nowhere to place. Oh, hey, this, you know what, this discussion sounds similar because didn't we just have this discussion one episode ago and a couple of dozen episodes ago, which is literally, I mean, there's two ways to look at it, I guess, Robert, is one is for our real estate chatters who like and subscribe to our channel, how they use this to strategize their investments, because when you read how the government is, I guess, proposing these different strategies that they're putting together to introduce housing in, you can kind of decipher how you can put that to play when you acquire investment properties, but also just the sheer headline or, or the excitement of headlines saying that there's solutions to this, whereas they have another lever that they can easily control that could be a solution, but it's not as, I guess it's not as glamorous to say, hey, we're cutting down the number of people coming into Canada in order to help relieve the housing situation. I guess they wouldn't do that. Supply demand, you've got to address one. And if you address the wrong one, you're only making the problem worse. Guess what? They're addressing the wrong one. There you have it. So I guess no further discussion from this because this is the same thing we've been talking about in a previous episode. Well, if an idiot comes up with an idea, they're bound to come up with more idiotic ideas. And you can you can almost guarantee that. And if there's two idiots that get together, they'll put together three ideas that are unreal and got absolutely nothing to do with what's needed well hey we've got a whole year coming up so let's see if we see any more of these ideas come to play if you like this episode make sure you click like comment into your uh into the the chat or, or the comment box i guess is what you call it here and tell us what you think about wartime housing what you think about uh what the government is doing to address it's standardized supply. housing it's not wartime housing that's the last time they did it it's standardized housing just like in 1950s Russia. Standardized housing, cookie cutter housing. How about that? Template-based housing. Copy. They're all made out of ticky tacky and they all look just the same. Copy, paste, control C, control V, housing, whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode. Take care and bye for now. See ya.